Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. Today we are going to talk about operators. So by definition an operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical manipulation. So any kind of mathematical or a logical operation you have to do, you have to use operators in batch scripting. We have five types of operators in batch scripting. First is arithmetic, second relational, third logical, fourth assignment and fifth bitwise. Let's talk about arithmetic first. So any batch uh, operation that consists of uh, arithmetic operators that should have plus minus division, multiplication and modulus operator. How does they work? How, how do they work? Is addition of two or more operands which is 2 plus 3 plus 5 will give us 10. Similarly for subtraction 10 minus 4 will give us 6. Division 10 divided by 10 will give us 1. Multiplication 10 into 10 will give us 100. And modulus operator is the remainder after division. For example, 16 divided by 3 is 1. How? 3 fives are 15 and remainder is 1. So that's why we'll get this answer. Moving on, the relational operators. So these are the operators that allow the comparison of objects. So there are six types of them. EQ, e NEQ, LSS, LEQ, GTR, and GEQ. EQ, U will test the equality between two objects. For example, 4 equal 4 will give us true because 4 is equal to 4. In any Q, it will test the difference between two objects. So is there any difference between 4 and 2? Yes. Then it will give us true. In LSS, it will check to see if the left object is less than the right operand. So 2 is less than 4, obviously. So it will give us true. In LEQ, it will check if the left object is less than or equal to the right object. So 2 is less than or equal. Yes, one condition which is 2 is less than then it will give us true. In GTR, it will check to see if the left object is greater than the right operand. 4 is greater than the right operand. Yes, then it will give us true. In GEQ, it will check to see if the left object is greater than equal to or the right operand. Yes, 4 is greater than 2. So it will give us so that's how we use relational operators. It can be quite confusing right now, but once we see the demo, we'll be much more clear on this. The logical operators. In the logical operators, we have AND, OR, or NOT. So AND, both the condition has to be fulfilled. In OR, one condition could be fulfilled. And in NOT, so it is like true or false kind of a thing. So in AND, it will return only true when both the conditions are fulfilled in or any one and in not is like it's zero or one. You can understand zero as uh, false and one as true. We'll talk about it in our demo. Assignment operators. Assignment operators are plus equal to, minus equal to, into equal to, division equal to and modulus equal to. This is a short form of this, uh, this statement. So when you use plus equal to, it creates this kind of a command. For example, if I use a plus equal to 30, then it should be a equal to a plus 30. So a value is 50 over here. So 50 plus 30 equal to 80. So the answer should be 80. Similarly, minus equal to will be a equal to a minus 30. So a is 50. 50 minus 30 is 20. So the answer is 20. Similarly here, a equal to a into 30, a value is 50 over here. So 50 into 30, 1500. For division, a is 60 over here. So this 60 goes over here, 60 slash 30 equal to 2 for this one. And for modulus, a is 50 over here. So the value comes over here. Uh, this a modulus equal to 30 will be a equal to a modulus 30. So 50 modulus 30 is 30 on the 30, remainder is 20. As I told that modulus gives the remainder value, then the answer would be 20. So that's how your assignment operators work. Moving on, bitwise operator. So bitwise operator are AND, OR, AND, ZOR. So these three will be using in the bitwise. So this is bitwise AND operator bitwise OR operator, bitwise OR operator. So concept explanation is something like this. If A has a value of 0 
and b has a value of 0 then a and b both the condition are fulfilled or not so both the condition are not fulfilled so it has to give 0 or or one condition has to fulfilled so no condition is getting fulfilled so 0 and for zor it will give us 0 itself so in and both the condition has to be fulfilled in or one condition has to be fulfilled so 0 is false 1 is true so when we say 0 here and 1 here in and both the condition has to be fulfilled but both are not fulfilled what i mean by fulfilled is 0 is true sorry 0 is false 1 is true so true and true has to be two conditions to be fulfilled then only it will get one over here okay so 0 is there 1 is there one condition is false over here then it should give us 0 and in or either condition should be fulfilled so a is 0 but b is 1 and 1 is true so this is fulfilled so 1 over here for Zor, we have 1 over here. So, in this, either A or B has to, uh, one of these values has to be 1, then it will be 1. Now, if A has 1 and B has 1, and both of, which means both of them are true, so A and B will be true because both the conditions are fulfilled. Now, in A or B, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It will be 1 because either a has to be 1 or b has to be 1 so it will give us 1 but in case of zor if both the conditions are fulfilled it will give us 0 as it gave it in this 0 and 0 when a is 1 b is 0 a and b will give us 0 why because one of these is false as i told that 0 consider 0 as false in a or b it will give us 1 because one condition has to be fulfilled and one is already fulfilled so one is true then in A, Zor B, what it will do is, it will give us one value. So that's what I told earlier, that either in Zor, either of A or B has to be one. So that's how we explain bitwise operator. I know it's a lot to catch right now, but once we go to the demo, we'll have more clarity. So for demo, what we'll do today is, we'll open our Visual Studio code, which we installed long back. We'll go to file, we'll go open folder, we'll go to the folder. This is the folder where we had uh, all our code. And if uh, you're getting confused, just paste the path that you copied and open it. And you will have all your code over here. So we, we are going to talk about these five files today. Click on the arithmetic one. Now this could be a little bit smaller for you. So what you can do is you can go to, uh, and if this terminal is not visible for you, go to terminal, new terminal, okay? And if this is a little bit uh, smaller for you, then what you can do is you can go to extensions, type on terminal zoom. It will show you this, click on this and install it. I've already installed it. That's why it's showing disable for me. Otherwise, it would have showed something like this. So install this terminal zoom. Once you've done it, restart it, and then you go back. So you can see that something will be created here. Click on this and choose the right size. The current size is 18. If you want to increase it, click on 20 and it will be increased. So this way you can see much better. I'll make it back to or it's okay, fine. You can Check whether it is selected PowerShell or anything else over here. It does not matter because it will work, it will work you in the same way. Just do a CLS and clear it. In case this size is small for you, what you can do is you can just go to your command palette in view and look for editor phone zoom in. If it's not there, then just type it editor zoom and it will show you this. Click on this and it will increase the size. I want one more. I'll just put it over here. I'll give view. And I'll increase it again. In case you want to do once more, do it like this. I think it would be visible to every one of you. Now what you can do is 
let's run this what we are having over here is first is 50 second is 100 third is 120 and we are going to operate all the arithmetic operators over here let's run this now what do we do over here we type w tab it will come like this so it comes like this over here just hit enter and it will show you the results so 50 plus 100 is 150 50 minus 100 is minus 50 50 into 100 is 5000 50 divided by uh, 100 divided by 50 is 2 and uh, what is third over here third is 120 over here so 120 divided by we'll use the double double modulus divided by first first is 50 third is 120 so 120 divided by 50 is uh, so 50 to the 100 and the remainder is 20 so the answer is 20 i hope this is clear for you all so this is how your arithmetic operators work now let's go to relational operators in relational operate operators let's just clear this after cleaning let's run it you can move it above and you will just type x over here and enter it showed us some problem okay and it's a problem because we did not select it so let's type x over here now this is the file that we had to select it and now it will run so what is happening over here so first is 5 second has been assigned a value of 10 so it is checking that 5 is equal to 10 so condition is not fulfilled that's why it's not printed in this case 5 not equal to second so yeah this is fulfilled that's why it printed first is not equal to than second you can make it correct over here okay now in third case what it is checking 5 if less than 10 over here so yes condition is fulfilled so first is less than second okay now in this condition first is less than or equal to uh, second yes condition is fulfilled then it has printed this now in this ninth line first is greater than 10 no so condition is false so it won't print anything in the other greater than equal to second like 5 is greater than or equal to second both the condition are false so it won't print anything so these this is how relational operators work let's move on to logicals and just clear the screen over here so i have created a small script over here in which i am using if statement so this is nested if if you can see so assigning a value first to 50 and second to 100 so first is greater than or equal to 100 yes or no 50 is greater than or equal to no so the condition won't be fulfilled in order to make it more easier for you i'll just run this so the answer is 50 is less than 100 or 100 is greater than 0 okay now how this result came so let's walk through the program so first is 50 second is 100 so 50 is greater than or equal to 100 it's false so it won't go inside this block it will go directly over here because the condition is not fulfilled so it printed echo first first is 50 so 50 is less than 100 or 100 is greater than 0 so that's how the condition has been fulfilled and that's how your geq leq works it didn't even go here because it failed at this condition itself so it jumped from here to here and executed this you can create your own programs in order to understand it more now let's talk about assignment operators if you can see on my screen i have assigned five values to five different numbers number one is 50 2 is 100 3 is 200 fourth is 300 fifth is 400 now we are doing operations over here so as i already told that 
plus equal to means number equal to number plus 50. Similarly, number equal to number minus 50, number equal to number into 30, number equal to number divided by 50, number equal to number modulus of 50. Okay. So let's run it. In case you are finding it uh, a problem over here, so you can what you can do is you can split the terminal or you can just right click over it and move the panel to the right. So it will come over here. It might become easier to understand the program and this as well. Let's do a CLS over here and run this program. Now let us understand this. So number one was 50. So 50 plus 50, which is number equal to number plus 50, 100. Number two is 100. So 100 minus 50 is 50. 200 into 50 is 10,000. 300 divided by 50 is 6. 400 modulus of 50 is 0 because 50 into 8 is 400. So there is no remainder at all. So that's how it works, guys. You can take some time to understand this, but this is how it's been happening. So in place of plus equal to, if I would have written number equal to number plus 50, then it would have been the same thing which I showed. Let's move on to bitwise. So in bitwise, we can see there are three things. Bitwise and bitwise uh, or and the ZOR or XOR you can say it. Let's clean this and run this. Z underscore bitwise. Enter. And it has shown 4 as a result of first one, 7 as a result of second one and third as a result of this one. Now how did it happen? Let's understand. If you take a look at this picture, this is the truth table of everything that we did over here. So we have taken a value of 7 and 4 with AND or ENZOR and the answer is 4, 7 and 3. Now how does it work? So the first one bitwise operator takes the last two values of first and the other one and then calculate it. So in AND both the condition has to be fulfilled. So 1 and 0 would be 0, 1 and 0 would be 0 again, 1 and 1 would be 1 and 0 and 0 would be 0. So what is this 0, 1, 1 in front of 7? This is a binary representation. So binary representation of 7 would be 0, 1, 1, 1 and for 4 it would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And after that, this bitwise, when it talks after the last two values, it will calculate on the basis of AND. And this is the truth table of AND gate. So now 1 or 0 would be 0. So this would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And this is a binary representation of digit 4. Thus, the answer is 4. Now let's move on to our fourth one. Sorry, uh, the OR one. The truth table of OR is that both of them has to be 1, then it will be 1 and then only it will be 0 when both of them are 0. So 1 and 0 would be 1, 1 and 0 would be 1, 1 and 1 would be 1 obviously and 0 and 0 would be 0. So this is the representation in binary for number 7 and that's why the answer is 7. Let's move on to our ZOR or XOR gate. That this is the truth table. So when one of the values is 0, then the answer would be 1, like this and like this. Otherwise, it would be 0 if both the values are same. So in order to calculate that, we'll just convert this into binary 0, 1, 1, 1. 4 would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And 3, three is the answer because 1 and 0 would be 1, which is taking uh, a reference from here. 1 and 0 would be 1 again. 1 and 1 would be 0 and 0 and 0 would be 0. So 0, 0, 1, 1 is the binary representation of 3 and that's why the answer is 3. If you want me to run it again, I can just CLS it and run it again. Sorry, uh, Z underscore bitwise. And you can see this is the answer. So thanks guys. Uh, I think you have uh, understood it well. If not, you can uh, write down your questions in the comment and we will address. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.